The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalo Valunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Pediatric teacher for form five. Another lesson, lesson of today, which will be titled "The Traditional Square of Opposition." And through table. Um, our lesson of today will be the traditional square of opposition. Square of opposition and truth table. That will be our lesson of today. Now, before we enter in our lesson proper, in our formal lesson, we're talking about assignment. And also, we talked about subordination opposition. We gave assignment. So let's look at our assignment we gave. And also, look at it. In our last one, we talk about sub give the subordination of the following. Remember in our last slide, we're talking about a square in which A and E are up, I and O are at the bottom, right? We said the subordination pairs are A, I, I, A, E, O, and O, E. Both of them was affirmed as well as both of them was denied. So, what do we have our answer? All principals are teachers. So that all principals are teachers. Our answer will be some principals are teachers. Not so all teacher principals are teachers. Some principals are teachers. No monkeys are dogs. Some monkeys are not dogs. E goes to O as well as O goes to E proposition. Another Third one, some monkeys are crooks, right? Some monkeys are crooks. The subordination of an I proportion would be all monkeys are crooks. Also, I goes to A as well as A goes to I. The last one is some workers are not civil servants. Some workers are not civil servants. From O to O, E, which is no workers are civil servants. The traditional square of opposition and the truth table. We are going to be looking at lesson overview, lesson justification, prerequisites, real life situation, some integration activity, as well as assignments. But first and foremost, our lesson of today, we are going to look at the types of, in, of inference, the various types of inference, as well as the various rules, that is, the various forms of emitted, of emitted inference, as well as their rules of all the forms of opposition in emitted inference. At the end of my lesson, we are going to look at all the forms of Opposition, that is, subordination, contradiction, 
contrariety and contrary opposition, as well as we are going to look at the truth table and the, of all their forms of opposition. Before entering into our topic of today, that is um, traditional square of opposition, we saw in our previous lesson the types of inferences and their forms of immediate inferences, and we made emphasis on subarticulation opposition, which we saw that is a logical relationship between two proportions that have the same subject term, the same predicate term, that have the differ in quantity, but they also have the same quality. That is the A and the I, as well as the E and the O proposition, which makes it a subarticulation phase. Now, dear learners, real life situation. Let's put ourselves in a situation. Not so, man, woman, children are extended family. An extended family. Now, the problem is what relationship and differences can you establish between them? What are the, what are the relationships you can, can establish between a man, a woman, children and extended family as well as what is the differences that you can establish between them not so now proposed solutions what are the relationship you see that all of them the what all of them man woman children and extended families all can trace their origin from some ancestors or from some the same ancestors and they also have the same great grandfather that's a relationship between man, woman, children, and extended family. Now, what are the differences? You see that in that relationship of man, woman, children, and extended family, some of them are males, others are females, as well as some are tall, and others are short. That is the difference between the man, woman, children, and extended families. So, in our lesson of today, we are going to be looking at how we can look at the various relationships and differences that we can establish between the square of opposition, the various categories of relationship between the A and the I, the I and the A, the E and the O, as well as the O and the E, the E, A and the E, and the E and the A, the I and the O proportion, as well as the O and the I proportion, and as well as A and O, and O and A, E and I, and I, and I, and E proposition. So what are the relationships that we have to look at today? Our topic of today, or our lesson of today, as we said, we based on traditional square of opposition and truth table. First of all, what is a square of opposition? Remember that a square of opposition is a graphical representation or illustration which shows the relationship that exists between propositions. Not so, a graphical illustration will show the relationship existing between propositions under one aspect called opposition. Now, what is the square of opposition used for? What is that square of opposition used for? We can see that a square of opposition is used to determine whether proportions are equivalent in terms of their truth value. Or it can also be used also to determine the compatibility of elements as can be seen below. Look at it. In a, in a traditional square of opposition, remember that it is a relationship that exists between the four categorical propositions. The four categorical propositions, that is the A, the E, the I, and the O propositions, in which the universals A and E are placed at the top, the particulars I and O are placed at the bottom, the affirmatives A and I are placed on the left hand side, 
the negatives E and O are placed on the right hand side. The top line indicates contrary. The bottom line indicates subcontrary. The perpendicular lines indicate subalternation. Subalternation. As well as the diagonal line E and I, A and O, represent what we call contradiction. Contradiction. That is a square of opposition. Now look at it. As you can see it, not so. It's a square of opposition. A graphical illustration of the opposition of the A, the E, the I, and the O proposition. As you can see from the diagram above, there's the A, the E, the I, and the O proportion. The top line talks about contraries, bottom line, subcontraries, the, the perpendicular lines, subalternation pairs, that is E and O, O and E, I and A, A and I. And the contraries, that is what we call the diagonal lines A to O, are called contradictories. O to A, also called contradictories. I to E, called contradictories, as well as E to I, are called contradictories. Now, look at the table, a truth table. Remember that in this diagram of a square of a portion, we can also represent it also on a truth table as given below. Now, look at when A is given, A is, is empty, which means it cannot have a relationship. It means that what's the relationship between A and E proportion? It means that when A is given as true, E must be false. That is what we call contra writing, which means A is given. E is false, contrariety. A is given when A is false. It is doubtful, right? Means relationship between E and A, contrariety. When A is given as true, A is false. When E is given as false, A is doubtful. When I is given as true, A is doubtful. When I is given as false, A should be false. If O is given as true, A should be false. If O is given as true, as false, A should be true. As well as, if A is given as, as true, E should be true. A is given as false, E should be doubtful. If I is given as true, E should be false. If I is given as false, A should be false. If it's true, if O is given as true, E should be doubtful. If O is given as false, E should be false. If A is given as true, I it should be true. If A is given as false, I is doubtful. If E is given as true, I should be false. If E is given as false, I should be true. If O is given as true, I should be doubtful. If O is given as, as false, I should be doubtful. Now, relationship between A and O, when A is given as true, O will be false. If A is given as false, E, O will be true. If E is given as true, O will be true. When E is given as false, O will be doubtful. If I is given as true, O will be doubtful. If I is given as true, as false, O will be true. The rest on doesn't balance. Now, that is a truth table of what we call the relationship that exists between the categorical propositions in a traditional square of opposition. Now, in a traditional square of opposition, remember that we are talking about the relationship that exists between all the four modes of opposition. That is subalternation, contradiction, contrariety, as well as subcontrariety pairs. First one, subalternation. Remember, we said 
subalternation is a logical relationship that exists between two categorical propositions which have the same subject term, the same predicate terms, the same quality, but it differs in quantity. Both must either be affirmative as well as both can also be negative. So we say that the pairs of subalternation are A, I, I, A, E, O, as well as O and E proposition. That is subalternation aspect. What are the rules of subalternation? It's the rules of subalternation from the truth of the universal A and E, we derive the truth of the particulars I and O. From the falsity of the particulars I and O, we derive the falsity of the universals A and E proportion, which means that if A is true, I too will be true. If A is false, I will be doubtful. If E is true, O will be true. If E is false, then O will be doubtful. The second rule of subalternation is that from the falsity of a particular, we do what? We derive the falsity of the universal. That is, if I is false, A is false. If A is false now, you see that I will be doubtful. But similarly, if O is false, automatically E must be false. But if E now is false, you see that O will be doubt or undetermined. The second form of opposition is that of contradiction. Is that contradiction is a logical relationship that exists between two categorical propositions which have the same subject term, the same predicate term, but it differs in both quantity as well as in quality. Now, in contradiction, one affirms what the other denies, which means that if one is true, then the other must be false. In contradiction, both cannot be both can be true, but both cannot be false at the same time. Therefore, the contradictory pairs of is what the A and O, O and A, the contradictory, both of them must be what? True, the both of them cannot be formed. So A, O, O, A, E, I, E, as well as E and I proposition. Now, what are the rules of contradiction? Rule of contradiction states that the first one, because there are two of them, from the truth of either contradictory, we may infer the falsity of the other. From the truth of either contradictory, we may infer the falsity of the other. Which means that if A is true, O is false. If O is false, A is true. If E is true, I is false. If I is false, E is true. Not so? Now, again, we can see that the second rule says that from the falsity of either contradictory, we may infer the truth of the other, right? Which means that if A is false, O is true. If O is false, A is true. If I is false, E is true. If I, E is false, I is true. Therefore, from the falsity of either contradictory, we may infer the truth of the other. Now, the third form of opposition is that of contrariety. Now, what is contrariety again? We see that contrariety is a logical relationship that exists between two propositions, right? In which they have the same subject term and the same predicate term. They also have the same quantity, but now they differ in quality. Contraries must be universal, which means contrariety is only with the universal the A and the E propositions. Now, in contrariety, one affirms totally what the other denies totally. Therefore, they cannot both be true, but they can be both false at the same time. One affirms wholly, while the other denies wholly. So, we we'll look at the contrariety pairs of our diagram on the board. You see that when A 
and E are contraries, right? That's A, E, as well as E and A are contrariety pairs. What is the rule of contrariety pairs of opposition? The rule says that from the truth of either contrary, we may infer the falsity of the other. Which means this is because what both cannot be true, but both can be false at the same time. It means that what? The falsity of one does not infer the truth of the other. Which means the truth of one infers the falsity of the other, but the falsity of the other does not infer the truth of the other. Which means that if A is true, E is false. If A is true, A is false. But if A now is false, automatically E should be doubtful. If E is false, automatically A should be doubtful. That's why we say, from the truth of either contrary, we may infer the falsity of the other. This is because of what? It cannot both be, it can both be false, but cannot both be true at the same time. The fourth aspect is subcontrariety pairs. Now, that's the last aspect that we're going to look at in opposition. What is first and foremost subcontrariety? This is first the opposite of contrariety. If contrary opposition is A and I, therefore subcontrariety and the opposite will be I and O proposition, which therefore, if contrary is the relationship between two universals, subcontrariety will be the relationship between two particular propositions. Not so, therefore, subcontrariety is a logical relationship that exists between two propositions which have the same subject, the same predicate terms, they have the same quantity, but differ in quality. Some subcontrariety pairs must always be in particular propositions. That is, I and O, whereby one can affirm partially as well as the other can also deny partially. They cannot be false, but they can be both true at the same time. Therefore, our contrary pairs are I, O, and O, I. Rules of subcontrariety. Rules of subcontrariety. Now, look at it. Rules of subcontrariety, it means from the falsity of either subcontrary, we may infer the truth of the other. Also, but the truth of one does not involve the falsity of the other, which means that if I is false, O is true. If I is true, then O will be doubtful, right? If I is false, O will be true. Now that I now is true, O will be doubtful. If O is false, I will be true. When now that O now is true, we say I have to work on determining that. Dear learners, welcome to the end of our lesson. But before we go, there are some questions. Not so, MCQ questions. In order for us to best understand our lesson of today, traditional square of opposition and truth table. First question. Which of the following pairs of opposition inference differ in quantity and quality? Which of the following pairs of opposition differ in both quantity and in quality? A. Contraries. B. Subalternations. C. Contradictories. And D. Subcontraries. So which of them differ in both quantity and in quality? Yes, you see that the correct answer should be contradictory. Not so a contradictory proposition or have the same subject, the same predicate term, but they differ in both quantity as well as they differ also in both quantity and quality. Number two, the logical relationship 
between two propositions having the same subject term and the same predicate term also have the same quality but different in quantity is known as now look at logical relationship that exists between two propositions having the same subject the same predicate the same quality but deeper in quantity known as a sub r relation b contradiction c contrariety as well as d sub contrariety the same subject the same predicate term the same quality but deeper in quantity opposition is known as sub alternation also sub alternation they have the same subject the same predicate term they have the same quality but what differs from them is they differ in quantity three the sub alternation of the sub contrary of some angels evangelists are prophets is what the sub alternation of the sub contrary yes a some evangelists are not prophets b no evangelists are prophets c all evangelists are prophets and d some pro prophets are evangelists now so look at all the book when you see a question like this two of them we have two indicators some alternation and some contrary of an i proposition we start from having an i proposition what the contrary not so now what's the contrary the sub contrary of an i is that the sub contrary of an i is an o proposition so sub contrary of some evangel evangelists are prophet will be some evangelists are not prophets and finally some are ten will be what no evangelists are prophet. So our answer will be no evangelists are prophets. Number four, given that O is false, what can be inferred to E, A, and I proportion respectively? Given that O is false, what can be inferred to E, A, and I proportion respectively? You have A with false. Doubtful, true, true, false, undetermined. Doubtful, true, false, false, true, true. Now, look at if O is false, right? What will be our answer? You see that? When O is false, it will be what? It will be true. We have true. If O is false, when, when O is false, not so. When O is false, E relationship universal subordination so if you are false. After again, when O is false, A is true. When O is false, I is what true. So we false true true. So a correct answer there will be T. But five. Supposing that all pastors are preachers is a fact. All pastors are preachers is a fact. The truth value of some pastors are preachers will be, remember, A, doubtful, B, false, C, true, D, undetermined. Not so? Now, if A is all a fact proportion, what is I? It means if I is true automatically, I also will be true. So a correct answer there will be, C. Zelenas, number six. Which of the following is true of subcontrariety? A. From the truth of one, we may infer it for the truth of the other. From the falsity of one, we may infer the truth of the other. From the truth of one, we may infer the falsity of the other. From the falsity of one, we may infer the truth the falsity of the other. Rule of subcontrariety. B. From the falsity of one, we may infer the truth of the other. That's the rule of subcontract writing. Zelenas, we have come to the end of our lesson, traditional square of opposition and truth per table. So far, we have revisited the immediate inference as well as the two types of inference. We have identified the different rules of opposition of all forms, that is subordination, contradiction, subcontrariety, as well as contrariety opposition. 
but we have emphasized on the traditional square of operation and truth values that carries all of them as well as on a graphical illustration table telling us we cannot go without living assignment now our assignment will be that state the rules of the following to the rules of the following one subordination of position two contradictory opposition three contrary opposition and four subcontrary opposition telling us our lesson of today came from copy al zin al and Mul. our next lesson in our next class will be based on eduction which is the second mode of immediate inference Unna tege si ma tege yop Unna tege minga ma tege nyum Unna tege ma jang ma tege ndom Mane tambia ninya ne njubya yen Ngani bana ma tege mot Ngani la kiri wa tege ndong Esa kina bia jinki do Mane tambia ninya ne njubya yen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 